Of all the boys of Plateau Private School, all the short-shorted, dust-dipped disciples of Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris, of all the wire-headed heathen, my posse of Voltron-forced, fraggle-rocked, teenage mutant hero nerds, each had a party trick, a talent. Kika B would eat a fistful of desert sand spiced with soldier ants. Truth to turn the beige mulch of rich tea biscuits, swallow twice and live to tell the tale. Dr. Mukoi could flatulate the first line of the national anthem <laughs> with such clarity, Raymond Ogunsayo swore he heard words. <laughs> tea could spit faster than fleas skip, further than lizards leap, spit so high we claimed him Herculean in form, the half god of rainfall. And of the four talents, I was the art kid awaiting the school bell. With the sun for floodlights, the ground for canvas, a sharp twig splashing sand about like paint. I would capture Kicker's grin, Dapper's musical sin, teeth thick lips, saliva dripping, an eye angled as a ghetto Van Gogh, shoulders hunched to get the staunch slouch right. We would pose beside the drawings, sculptures of ourselves. The other boys clustered, all dark-eyed and envious, but not enough to scatter sand in any way. So this day after, I sidled into school, still sketch louched, find a canvas suddenly blank, sand mysteriously smoothed. Most likely, the janitor simply did his job. But instead, we conjure how creatures of the night, voodoo priests and priestesses, mammy waters, bush babies, witch doctors and sorcerers, all the sulfurous quartz, crimson-eyed, dark-circled venom stuff, rumored to work the night, we theorize they spent their hour playing with our sand. The priest outlined us in white chalk, spoken voodoo talk, that raised up dust dolls of us, who, naked with the witches, limboed with your brooms. The bush babies gaggled and good and devil glee till the clock struck three and vanished instantly. A foul wind of howling wolves swept through, leaving sand smooth as fresh sheets, as the wide ruled page ident and reminisce of tongues turned tireless, of dark art thrill, of how quick we fixed our little plight with fantasy, which flows, you know, it ever shapes, ever reveals the world an unquenchable sea of mist myth that wisp whips who ask it. Some trap it with tongue, some a double bass strum, some hum, some a little bit inclined to sculpted forms. A boy was enticed in with sand and a stick, or now as I do, with a pad and a bick. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Ah. So um, I'm primarily a poet and a writer, and that is kind of like a journey of how I ended up doing what I do. Um, so generally, there's the perception that talent is a good thing, and I think not always. And this last poem helps to illustrate that point. This is called, um, this is called Shame is the Cape I Wear. On the first day of holidays, my mother leaves a dark blue wrapper on her bed her polished boots in one corner, and in no time I assemble a superhero costume to protect the house against the plague of lizards and their spindly children. Tongues flicking, head nodding on the afternoon heat, they are a reptilian evil. Every hero needs a nemesis. This cotton cape casts me as Nigeria's Superman, and they threaten life in the Lagos metropolis. No matter the property you buy, how tight shut the gutters, how climb proof the walls, also how sharp be a crown of barbed wires, the lizards come. Father who insists a clean, well-swept backyard helps is away, and the long-tailed legion are confidently swarming all about the place, across the air vents, up the garden's wire mesh, too thin to survive their claws. Anyway, I'm hovering by that, meth, that mesh, a rubber band stretched between my fingers, cape flowing, and a quiver of toothpick thick bristles, one curled against the taut elastic. I catch one lizard's beady, steady eyes, take aim, fire, and watch the bristle break through its back, first piercing its soft stomach, and my aim just gets better. An hour and their bodies piled, above a commotion of flies excitable over the stiffening flesh and blood, and I have watched my shadow lengthen to cover the gray and red-head corpses, the backyard a silent killing field, 
that I could almost feel that flowing cape deflate. Sometimes I think that little boy in his mother's work boots has followed me my whole life through. There he is when I'm laughing at a party and find a crimson drink spilled across the clean carpet. And when I look in the mirror to see what the years have done to me, when I'm flicking through news channels and catch a wartime president speak of collateral damage and first class weapons and the locals are broken behind soldiers and men in tweed who will fabricate stories of jubilant cheers and fist pumps and shame is the cape I wear that day, shame. And that little boy, that shadow is there, his head hanging down as it did then, his hands shaking.